A recent detailed study shows remarkable images of a tumor shrinking to nothing after eliminating two amino acids from our diet. Within that study, they not only uncovered some of the mechanisms, but they ran a clinical trial, so a study in humans, showing these results to hold up. Now, even with all this excitement and brilliant science, there's a lot of context to apply here. These two amino acids are serine and glycine, and in this image comes from a person dealing with cancer, in fact, quite advanced cancer, usually solid tumors that were stage three or higher grade. Now, before the trial, you can clearly see that the tumor in the intestinal tract, and only nine weeks later, the tumor has just about evaporated completely. Now, the reason this protocol that people were placed on, including this serine and glycine restriction, so the image comes from colorectal cancer, and about half of the patients in the study had colorectal cancer, but others had esophageal, gastric, liver, and other forms of cancer. And in fact, when looking at a mouse model designed to show how reproducible these results are, we can see that the glycine and serine restriction led to significant reduction in tumor weight, indicated by the red bars. Now, the reason for this effect caused by glycine and serine restriction comes down to our immune system. When researchers removed particular immune cells from the body, they discovered that serine and glycine restriction was still effective, unless a particular class of cells was removed. Those cells are called CD8 positive cells. They're a type of T cell, a specialized immune cell, that's responsible for recognizing and attacking what it is what it has been trained to attack. Hence their full name, a cytotoxic T cell. So the key takeaway here is that serine and glycine restriction works through these CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells to attack cancer cells making up the tumor. Now to be clear, serine and glycine restriction are not sufficient to completely stress and kill the cancer cells. However, what it does is force the cancer cells to rely on a specific immune evasion technique to avoid death. In doing so, we can then apply immunotherapy that targets that specific evasion technique, giving the cancer cells very few options to escape. It's like the cancer cell is running down a side alley trying to escape the immune cell police or something along those lines. And then it realizes there's a dead end with no way out. It's pretty remarkable. So what participants of this clinical trial did was undergo cycles of glycine and serine restriction plus immunotherapy. They would restrict both amino acids for nine weeks, having their blood metrics checked every three weeks. Then they consumed a supply diet devoid of serine and glycine and were allowed to eat some fruits and vegetables, but nothing containing appreciable amounts of either amino acid. They were not put on a calorie restricted diet and were given enough nutrition to mostly maintain their weight. So around 30 kilocalories per kilogram of weight and 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of weight. So if a person weighed 100 kilograms, that would be a healthy 3,000 kilocalories per day and 150 grams of protein. Now, while I teased this one image of this tumor disappearing, it, does, it actually doesn't give us a full picture. So here we have all the patients numbered on the horizontal axis. The zero there indicates no change in tumor size. So any bars that fall below that imaginary line indicates a shrinking of the tumors. Anything above indicates an increase in size. We'll address that shortly. This graph actually shows us similar things in two ways. The way that I just described it with the direction of the bars, but they also categorize based on clinical definitions where people would slot. As clinical definitions are strict and depend on specific thresholds, don't be fooled by uh, many being in the blue, which is associated with stable disease as opposed to partial response, meaning that clinically defined reduction in tumor. The key takeaway here is most people experience reductions in tumors and a small number experienced an increase in tumor size when using the serine and glycine deficient diet. Okay, so then why? Why would most cancers show improvements and some show worsening? There's actually a good reason, which I'll get into. And before that, there's something that the tumors do in response to glycine and serine restriction in an attempt to get around the issues caused by this restriction. It's called lactylation. 
In addition, there's a dance between two proteins on the cell surface, PDL1 and PD1, that holds the key to how tumors evade and then eventually fall to the treatments that we're talking about here. I'm covering all that in more detail and more than even what I just said there in the extended version of this video that you're watching. If you're interested in getting a complete breakdown of the science, you access all my work, video, article, podcast format, and much more by joining the Physionic Insiders, which is my premium research platform and community. Link to join is in the description. I'd really love to have you aboard. Now, the reason some people still experience progression of cancer could be down to a few possibilities. One, the type of cancer. Remember, while most cancers were colorectal, not all were, which means that some cancers may be immune to these effects. Alternatively, this diet was used for nine weeks, but was run in three-week cycles with data collected during that time. Some patients stuck it out for the full nine weeks. Others did only one cycle, so three weeks. So some did in between. Interestingly, those that stuck to it the longest tended to experience tumor stabilization or shrinkage. The relationship wasn't perfect though, and it's still speculation, but there may be something to the like time of exposure. The final thing that I'll note on this is that this was a phase one clinical trial. So we don't have a comparison group. That means that although some people experience progression in their disease, we don't know if they might have experienced even greater or quicker progression if they were not exposed to this protocol. Still, clearly, this helps some people more than others within the same treatment. The exact reasons aren't known. So, where does that land us applicably? On one hand, the data is heavy-handed toward human research, which is great because it translates from our genetically furry cousins to our less furry selves. However, it is an early small trial in a mixed group of cancers and has no control group. So while yes, it is feasible to do something like this over time because neither glycine nor serine are essential amino acids, there are many, many foods that contain them. These patients were lucky or unlucky, depending on how much you enjoy food, to have specialized nutrition created for them with this glycine and serine extracted. It's tough to eliminate glycine and serine entirely, though certainly possible to reduce it. This seems more so something that needs to be designed for this special use case of cancer. Also, I realize that some people supplement with amino acids like glycine, and there's even evidence of glycine helping fight cancer. So it might be confusing to run across studies showing this restriction is beneficial in fighting cancer. That's a nuanced conversation that I can get into at another time, but the short of it is that cancer is a difficult disease to pin down. Different cancers respond differently to the same treatment. In some cancers, so glycine may be effective, while for others it may be detrimental. We just don't have that enough data to tease that out, or at least those distinctions. But rest assured, there is nothing here that indicates that a person who is healthy, as in not diagnosed with cancer, should now limit their glycine consumption. I'm focusing on glycine because that's what I've been looking at in greater depth, but the same may be true for serine. So this is something to keep an eye on for the future, and it would be a remarkable way to reverse cancers if we can figure out all the details. Still, this is an excellent first stab at it. In the end, we can say a few things. One, that glycine and serine restriction allows our immune system, especially cytotoxic T cells, to attack and destroy cancer cells. In humans, this is paired with specific immunotherapy that facilitates that process. Two, there is now early evidence in humans that this protocol directly leads to slowing or reversing of cancer in most people studied. Much more data is needed, however. Beyond amino acid restriction, there's also other molecules, vitamins in fact, that have been believed for decades to kill cancer as well. I cover those studies right here. Thanks for tuning in. What incredible early research. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.